This is your Sweet Home Katusa Spotlight. Let's not waste time, we'll take this slow. We've got miles behind us, but miles to go. So let's just break this down to the simplest truth. You and I as one will always be better than Welcome, everybody, to our next and great episode of Sweet Home Catoosa. And today, we, perfect timing, right? We have Chance Nick, school superintendent for Catoosa County Schools here. Chance, thanks for coming out. Well, thank you so much for asking me uh, to come out. I, I love to do all the good things and uh, you know spread the good news about all the good stuff that's going on in our school system. Um, I'll do articles for the paper and right. different sh shows and uh, interviews and uh, one of my jobs primarily is to be the voice and the mouthpiece for our school system and to brag on all of our folks, brag on our kids uh, and tell what a great school system we have and, and, and how it impacts the community. So thank you for allowing me to be on your show. Uh, not a problem at all. So as we sit today and the episode will air a little bit here, but, you know, we're right at the cusp. School starting back. Yes, and um with the school year coming on, obviously there's changes and great things that are happening. And that was one of the things I wanted to bring you on for. And obviously there's other background noise going on right sure, now sure. and everything. But, um, you know, one of the things that caught my attention, obviously, was buses. And yeah. that's a good place to jump off and start because yeah. you had to come up with creative solutions to figure out that. And so um, let's, let's talk about that and let you explain yeah. to everybody what you did to find a great solution to a problem you had. Yeah, th this is this was uh, something I super proud of the way it all worked out um as everybody knows there's a national bus driver shortage school systems uh, uh, can no longer compete with uh the commercial trucking industry um that infrastructure th those jobs pay so much more than a uh you know a school can afford to pay a, a bus driver and they still have to have that cdl license so uh, we had to come up with a creative idea that's taxpayer friendly. Of course, you could, you know, go in and say, well, we're going to add nine million dollars to the budget, give everybody a pay raise and, and, and do all these types of things and increase the, the routes and drop off times. Uh, but it's just not cost efficient for taxpayers. So uh, what we did was uh, we met with the state and uh, had had one of their uh, directors come up and we had a meeting with him and we showed him kind of here's where we are. Uh, here's the size of our district. Catoosa County has 10,000 kids. We're a large school district, um, 1,850 employees and uh, about 125 bus routes uh, or bus drivers that drive multiple routes. So uh, he looks at everything with us and uh, he says, I'll show you what a lot of school districts your size are doing. They're going to a two-tiered system and uh, some even larger ones, like the Atlanta type areas, they'll have uh, three tiers and uh, elementary, middle and high. And so uh, we sat down, we looked through the logistics of that and how that could happen and uh, came up with an incredible idea. And so I took this idea and I, I went to the board with, they said, we love it. We, we trust that you guys are going to make great decisions for the school system. Um, and we love this idea. So I pushed it out and a survey to all of our parents. We have uh, the emails and things on uh, the uh, kids' uh, student information system. So I pushed it out to all the parents. Guys, here's what we're thinking. Here's a challenge. Here's a possible solution. And uh, over 90%, it was like 90, around 90, 91% said, we want to try it. We want to try something new. And so we did. And uh, we're starting that this year. And it's going to be a fantastic um piece of a comprehensive approach to uh you know get, get our kids to school and home from school on time with a, a more timely schedule that you know parents can kind of I, I know when my kid's supposed to be here um because we were we we're struggling bus drivers call in sick you got a bus now you got to get a substitute route driver so uh, this is going to be something that I'm super excited about and that will, I really, really, I'm confident it's going to improve uh, transportation in our district. It's not a silver bullet. It's not going to fix every problem, but man, is it going to address a lot of them. So what does that look like? So what was the change from last year to this year? Mm -hmm. If I'm a parent, 
-hmm. what did that look like? What was that change? What was this two tier system as far as? Yep. That's a great, that's a great question. That's really what parents want. How, how's it going to affect my kid? What, what, right. what, what's going to change for me? So what we did was we basically split the pro, the uh, elementary, which is primary and elementary school and the secondary routes, which is middle and high. Parents love that because th they would rather their littles ride with littles and That's not right. with bigs. That's right. And so it really, they love that. That's one of the uh, feedback uh, comments that we uh, received. But what it actually equates to is um, we're going to run the elementary route and then we'll come back and we'll run the secondary route. So instead of having one big route where everybody's going everywhere and picking up kids all over the place, we divided that. To make that work, you have to have at least about an hour in between those routes because we have to finish up the first route before you can start the second route. Right. Secondary students have to go to school much longer than the elementary and primary. They go, they go to school five hours a week more than the primary and elementary schools. So some, some folks wonder, why can't we do them first and vice versa? that we couldn't make that work because elementary kids would be in school so long. You, right. It's just untenable. Um, so there are some things that you have to maintain by state law, but there are other ways to be flexible. And so this stayed with the schedule that we'd always used. Um, and it also, uh, you know, it, it, it benefited by separating those two groups we did it in a small time. I said, guys, we can't give parents 30 minutes or that, that they, they, they have jobs. So we, we said 10 minutes, almost anybody can live 10 minutes plus or minus. So we, we, we just backed up the elementary start time by 10 minutes. And then we rolled forward the start time for the secondary kids by 15 minutes. Research shows older kids need more sleep. They do better when they do that. Um, and I can tell you, <laughs> the secondary kids love the later start time. Okay. They were all over it. <laughs> <laughs> when I was in high school or middle, yeah, I'd take an extra 15 minutes. Hey, listen, that's great. What a creative solution. So, yeah, I mean, back when I was in the restaurant business and I was a restaurant manager, a lot of my first shift, shift waitresses mm -hmm. had kids in school. Yeah. And so yeah. that was their schedule. They worked around yep. Kids get them up. I get them on the bus. I come to work. Now I've got to be off at a certain time because I've got to get back the opposite yeah. way to make sure I'm home yeah. in there to get that bus. And so um, it was always huge. And so, you know, our struggle obviously was when you had uh, an event, snow day or things that weren't predicted in the schedule. And all of a sudden now they're calling in saying, I can't come in today. I don't have child care because yes. this was so sudden. Yes. And there's that issue. So, you know, it's a trickle down effect, obviously, yes. when there's issues there. So for you guys in the school system to get something solid that helps the folks the people Without in the doubt. community right to be able to work those jobs that we need in the community we need them there so that's great that is, yeah that's fantastic and, and and we actually had got some uh comments from our folks on uh connect with chance it's a button on the website you ask me a question and i'll get you an answer um and uh, some of the good comments that we received were, uh, thank you, thank you, thank you. <laughs> this helps me because I've got one at the elementary, middle, and high. That's right. And this hel helps me to be able to drop each one of them off. Uh, and, and this is coming more from the car rider side than from the bus rider side. For the bus riders, it's really not going to be um, – um, a huge difference. Um, the breakfast will still be served at the you know the same times. The teachers will still be there at the same time. So it's not really ten minutes. It's not earth shattering, but it's remarkable what that ten minutes and the fifteen minute later start time at the secondary school. The, the possibilities that that opens up, and I don't anticipate it costing a, another dime. So. I'm super proud of our transportation staff. I'm super proud of our board for having the confidence and the trust to say, guys, let's think outside the box. It's a new time. We got to come up with a, uh, you know, as, as the Bible says, you can't put uh, how's that, uh, old wine in new wine skins or it'll burst. So we're, you know, we're, we're coming up with creative ideas to, uh, you know, make sure that we maintain the unbelievably awesome school system that we all inherited. Yeah, that's one thing that we, yeah, that's always talked about in Caduce County, anywhere you go, right, is 
great school system. Yeah. Great school system. And, you know, I my children went all the way through the school system and both went different routes. And I've talked about that before. One went the college route and the other one went military, mm -hmm. but they both had those open. And, you know, our, our daughter who went down to Dalton State, you know, she was able through the school system, all the support she had to go on scholarship, Zell Miller scholarship, mm -hmm. because she was able to achieve in the school system. The school system is phenomenal in Catoosa County. Mm -hmm. And for folks that move here, that's always one of the big things yes. they talk about. That was one of the deciding factors. Why did you not go into Hamilton County? Why did you move here? Yes. Even though you work in Hamilton, it's like schools. They're, the they're schools. without a doubt. And so yeah, we got a lot to be proud of. Absolutely. And, and I, I, I'm so glad you brought that up because I, I'm not sure that everyone understands the impact uh, that a school system has on your community. Um, you can, it's remarkable. We can determine pregnancy, teen pregnancy rates, incarceration rates, um, folks that are economically disadvantaged, uh, the, the, the government, of assist, government assistant rates based upon um, their elementary school test scores. There's a direct correlation. Um, so it's, it's so predictive of outcomes for the kids. And it's also, uh, it has such an effect on the, the local economy. Uh, like you said, people want to live in Catoosa County. They want to be here. And, you know, that sometimes I'll, I'll hear parents will say, we're trying to buy a home in your area. And we, we thought we had one, but somebody came in and bought it. They, they paid above what the person even wanted. Yeah. And it's because so many people want to live in our community. They want to go to our schools and our churches and shop at our stores. Uh, but you're right. Um, you know, 80% of them don't work in our county. They live here. And then they drive to other places because they love our county. They love our school system. And um, we got, we, I have to do everything in my power to make sure that we maintain that kind of school system because there's also a direct correlation between poor school systems and poor outcomes in a community. That, that the relationship is symbiotic and where you have one, most of the time you have another it in fact it, it impacts the number of employees you know we're connecting our kids with our employees most of these folks they they go to school here and they turn around and they live and work right here with us so you're right the school system is such an integral part to a, a community great schools you're, you're going to have a great community yeah and you know and that's one of the things people talk about too with caduce county is what we just have a lot of growth yeah. A lot of growth, a yes. lot of growth, a lot of growth. And, you know, it, it's, it's, you know, it's a byproduct of greatness, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. When you do something really well, people want to be a part of it. So, you know, it's like we need to slow growth down. It's like, but it's hard to do when yeah. you have something people want to participate yeah. in schools. Um, so, yeah. So, all right, let's talk about new school year, new things. Obviously, there's a lot going on in the background. So, what else do we have that you started or that's new or people need to know about and what's going on in our schools? So, one of the things that we've been exploring for many months now, there's so much background work that has to be done on this because federal funds and state funds and local funds all play different roles in their different buckets. And in each one of these buckets, um, there are, no money comes without strings, none. From the state, everything has strings on it. You take the money. So um, you have to be very careful because something you do over here to save some money will cost you money somewhere else. They it, it can support, but it can't supplant. That's how the you know the, the 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 documents, the legal documents are written whenever they come up with funding issues. So we've been looking at this for uh, uh, quite a while to make sure that we're going to be okay and that it's going to help everywhere and it's not going to come back to to bite us um because of something we didn't think about down the road and that's called a uh, cep um so cep uh is an incredible incredible gift really i'm going to call it a gift from the uh, usda and uh what it is means that certain schools if they have enough students in that particular school that qualify for free or reduced lunches, that school system may qualify for free lunches for the entire school um, 
without any paperwork whatsoever based upon paperwork that had has been completed in past years those free or reduced lunch rates so when we heard about this we were like we got to investigate it let's look at it so we started doing that and uh what we found is that five of our schools qualify for free lunches for the whole school and uh those schools are on the west side of our county uh west side cloud springs uh, west side elementary school lms uh, LFO, I didn't say that one, and uh, Tiger Creek is the uh, one on the other side of the county. So we have five schools that qualified, and uh, it's incredible. The other schools, they, they just did not qualify. Uh, they do not have enough free or reduced um, students uh, in that building to qualify. We're monitoring those uh, schools to see where those numbers might change, but I think it that probably comes uh, as a shock to a lot of people in our county because they see all of our surrounding schools systems that are able to do it district wide and uh, the reason is Catoosa County our, our median income is higher than everybody around us everyone around us we are much higher and our property values are they're worth much more. And I know it's hard to believe because you and I are like, we don't feel rich. We don't feel yeah. like our property's worth that much. But it, it actually, according to the state, they 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 look at these things and they say, no, you guys make more money. You have more money on a median income than all surrounding counties. And your property's worth more. And uh, you do not have near the amount of students on free or reduced lunch as your surrounding counties. And so... You know, I, where I wish all of our schools would have free lunches for every kid, because we know if a kid's hungry, they can't learn. Let's be honest. Sure. We, we, if a kid is um, hungry, there nothing is going well that day for that kid in that school. So we want all kids to be able to eat. But it's limited in Catoosa County to only five right now because of the number of free or reduced kids in uh, in in certain buildings. So it's not costing the taxpayers anything. Nope. Should sure. do this program. No, it's sir. all fully funded outside coming in. Um, and so, yeah, it, it, boy, talk about property values. So that's obviously a hot button topic. Sure it is. You know, anybody got their tax bill, and we all know, uh, on average in Catoosa County this year, it was 30% more. And everybody's like scratching their heads going, how in the world did my property jump up 30% in a year? And hopefully we can get another episode with people that can answer these questions because they are, they're state driven. Right. You know, the state comes in and audits and says, hey, if you're not within these guidelines, then we're going to penalize you. And Katusa was penalized um, financially for that. And then we had to catch up. But it's not local officials making these decisions. It's really state driven or federal, as you talk about. So we have five schools that qualify. That's fantastic. But sure, there's parents. The first thing I would think about is, well, wait a minute. My kids go over here to this school and I'm still having to pay. Mm -hmm. And so it's like I'm being penalized for being successful or, or making a you know, good living. And yeah, I get that argument. But at the end of the day, you took what was available mm -hmm. to help those folks in the community um, that obviously struggle, need that right. help. And it's not, it's the kids. Right. That's really where it comes down right. to. We want to protect our children. Without a doubt. Um, sometimes there's circumstances beyond our control in the house, but when the children are at the school, that's a controllable circumstance. So kudos to Caduce County for doing that and looking into that. Um, you know, I, I'd be honest with you. I wouldn't want our whole school district to be on free and reduced lunches yeah. because what would that mean for the county, right. right? It means as a county, we'd be struggling pretty badly. Right. And that's not where we ever want Catoosa right. County to be. Right. So it's a blessing in a way. It, it is. It speaks to the community. So I'll tell you, and I'm glad you brought that from a parent's perspective because, uh, because a parent in, in another school may also think, well, you know, does my kids still qualify for free or reduced lunch? They did before. Uh, and absolutely they do. Um, the only difference is they will continue to have to complete the free and reduced lunch forms uh, and turn those into the to the uh, federal government. And um, they will still qualify like they did in the past. It doesn't affect those folks. We're still going to have, you know, a significant uh, percentage of students in the other schools that also uh, are going to uh, need assistance. 
And, you know, Catoosa County is really, in a lot of ways, we're, we're a Title I county. Um, and what that means is just every school in our system, save one, receives federal Title I money. And there's lots of titles, Title I, Title II, Title III, and it just keeps on going. Right. And all, what it is, is it's federal money. And the federal government says, we will give you this money if you provide this service to these kids. And every single school in our district, except one school, is a Title I school. But the qualifications to be a Title I school are much lower than the qualifications to be a CEP school. Um, so you've got to have a, a, a pretty significant portion of your student population that qualifies for free or reduced lunch to become a CEP school. And if all 17 schools in our school district had the same amount of those free or reduced uh, uh, eligible students, then you are correct. Our entire district uh, would be a CEP district. And uh, I think almost every single school system around us qualified as a district. And I know parents are going to say, well, why does everybody in this county get free lunches and everybody in this county get free lunches and everybody in this county get free lunches, but everybody in our district does not, or everybody in our district does not get free lunches. And it's because the folks that do uh, qualify have to have a large percentage, the schools that qualify in that school and our other schools, they just, they don't qualify. Yeah, well, I haven't cleared that up because that sure, as a parent, first thing I would think about, right? Well, my kid goes to Ringgold Middle School and that's not an option for me. Right. And so, yeah, thanks for clearing that up. But that's great news. It's it's wonderful news for it helps the kids that need it. Sure. And they would they would have gotten it. Um, most of those students, they would have they would have qualified anyway in certain areas. But this way, it eliminates the um, burden on the families of filling that form out every year because it's not the kid's fault that the it, form didn't get filled out. That's sure. what breaks our heart. I used to beg our kids, guys, please, because kids are embarrassed to fill the form out. And and I, I so I, I started making sure that every kid got the form. And, you know, I try to we, I, you know, I turn it upside down when I was a teacher. And, hey, guys, it's all this information. In, because no kid, you know, hey, guys, if you did, if you need free lunch, will you come up here? We, we don't do it that way. Exactly. We are not embarrassing our kids. That's that's not it. Thankfully, most of it's online now. But I'll be honest. I received free free lunches when I was in school. You know, my father died when I was three. Uh, I was raised by a single mom most of the time. Uh, we moved to 11 different schools. Uh, I went, we moved a lot. Single mothers move a lot. And I received free or reduced lunches. And I remember how embarrassed I was as a kid to give your little ticket when you go through the lunch line. So all of your friends knew he's poor. He gets, you know, that's, that they would make fun of me or whatever. But um, thank God we've come so far away from that. And uh, it, it's not the kids, you know, fault that some form didn't get filled out or that they live in a certain neighborhood we love every single kid yeah every kid in this county i don't care who you are i don't care where you live i don't care what you believe what your folks believe we want those kids to come to our school and say you know what your teacher loves you just the way you are buddy and you can do anything and that is the empowering thing that our teachers do for our kids in this county and uh i'm just so blessed that i get to be a part of it, it's it's tremendously rewarding. It, it, it is, and, and, you know, everybody in the county sees that and knows that. And, you know, we forget sometimes um, those things like you discussed, you know, what the kids deal with because we're dealing with everything in our lives as well, right? And as adults, we deal with different group of problems and different things and we kind of lose focus sometimes. And um, quick story, our, our, our granddaughter and grandson and, you know, uh, eight and six jumping on the trampoline and she comes down and hits her front teeth on his head. And so she had to go have her front teeth removed. And here we are right back about to go to school. And her first thought was, Hey, I'm not going to have any front teeth yeah. and they're going to make fun of me. Yeah. And they're going to, you know, and as a parent, we're just thinking about, we need to get those teeth out of there right. because, you know, we need to make sure your permanent teeth can come in. Right. Mm -hmm. We're thinking of a whole different thing, but her first thoughts go to that. Oops. And as a kid, that's what they deal with every day. You know, they have to go and, and we forget, and it's great to be reminded. Um, and 
the community in Catoosa County as well have a lot of outside organizations that have stepped up to fill so many needs or holes. You, you know, you talk about the, the sack lunches to get sent home or opportunities for extra meals for kids or after school programs and all these things that, that get filled in in Catoosa County that means so much because the kids, it is. I mean, uh, yeah, if you know and you talk about it. If they can get that great foundation and they don't feel that pressure mm -hmm. um, and they get to just kind of be who they need to be mm -hmm. and get that confidence, they have such a better outcome mm -hmm. in life. Absolutely. So that's great. So that's a great second one. So we've covered two buses and now <laughs> that great one. So yeah. uh, the hits keep coming. What else yeah. do we have to look forward to this year? Well, uh, you know, uh, this evening, uh, we'll go over and we'll have Katusa Kids Day. Katusa Kids Day is an, an incredible day that does exactly what you said. Uh, we'll have folks that give free haircuts to kids. And I love going by and I'll see those little tots sitting up there, you know, and they're getting a free haircut. And uh, we give them all, you know, school supplies and backpacks and pencils and pens and uh, give the parents lots of information where, you know, they can receive uh you know, what, whatever kind of help or assistance they need. And, you know, just like a part of our county, you know, they may not need those uh, supports. Um, there is a portion of our county that does. And that's a beautiful thing about Catoosa County. You know, all three of our school feeder patterns, you know, they're, they're the same in, the lot, in so many ways, but they're also unique in so many ways. And uh, we love all the, you know, we love every single kid. I don't care if the boy's a no country boy with boots and a cowboy hat on. I love those sure. guys. I, I put a cowboy, I took a hat off the boy that day. I put it on my head. I said, let's get a picture together. And he just thought it was great. And I said, man, I'll come up here with my cowboy boots on. And because goes, I, I've got them. I can, I can do it with the best of them, belt, buckles and all. Um, but, I, but I love that kid. And then I also go over here and I love this kid who is a 100%. This kid is just, you know, he, he's what we would call he's in the nerd herd he loves the sci-fi and the video games and the uh fantasy stuff and i'll grab those kids and i'll ask them i'll say hey did you know we think about that star trek episode or this star wars movie and um and, and then, then you got the athlete and that kid you know and you're like hey what about you know how you think the dogs are going to be this year and our teachers do that i wish people could see what they what all they do they do that every day in the class reaching out and and, and kind of becoming you know all, all all people to all students so that kid comes to school and says my teacher likes me because kids that they don't think that their teacher loves them or likes them uh, they don't learn as well and i'm telling you it's so amazing i wish that people would you know come in our schools and and and, and watch uh, you know some people think we don't want the parents in schools i beg parents i want every parent to come to school you know you come you come to our school now there are safety things we got to have sure because we're keeping our kids safe too and, and 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 i don't know if you're a parent or not so we have we, you know there's checks and things to keep our kids safe but substitute we can't find enough substitute teachers uh we we're we we're begging for subs you know that's where the pandemic it did such a oh it was tough on schools we we're trying to come out of it but folks that wanted to sub before after the pandemic they don't sub anymore and folks that drove a bus before they don't want to drive a bus anymore and uh a lot of those folks who used to come to schools even our mentors our mentor program is just now getting start you know ramped back up again and buffy does such a great job with that um but it changed the school system in a fundamental way and we're still trying to recover from it um covid was like the civil war and we're living in an era of reconstruction sure. in the school system. That's Great one of the analysis. best it is. I, I tell our folks that we can't all resources were were to fight, fight, fight to get our kids back in the building. And and you know you got federal agencies and 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 state agencies saying your school's closed. You can't open the door. It doesn't matter if you want to or not. You're not opening the doors. Um, that's this is the law. Um, so wow, what a time when we came through that. It it it's. Oh my, I mean, scanning every kid every morning. I'll be at the door, take your temperature, take it. Oh, the, the, this kid's, you know, and then we're having to, but now we're, that's, that's behind us. That's the past. And now we're trying to rebuild. 
what did the kids not learn while they were out? What did the kids not, you know, kids are coming in and, you know, they, they're, they're not behaving like they did before. It, it is a tremendous change. And I don't, I, I don't think everyone truly understands, number one, the impact that that had on schools. Yeah. And then number two, what all we're trying to do to get out of that now, it, we're, we're not out of it and we're not going to be for years. That, that, that was a big, big, big uh, change for schools on how we operate them. And, and, and we're still trying to climb out of that uh, financially. Sure. You know, in Civil War, we, we, all the resources were spent f fighting. And then, and then afterwards, you're trying to build roads again. And so we're, we're living in that reconstruction. And I appreciate you saying that because it is a great analogy for what schools are doing now. It was just a couple of years ago. You know, we, we, it's not like it was 20 years ago. I think the kids that really suffered the most were maybe, you know, the later years of mm -hmm. middle, definitely high school, though. Mm -hmm. You know, the elementary school kids, um, they recover mm -hmm. and what they maybe didn't learn or mm -hmm. things. That, but we didn't have that opportunity, especially the high school kids, you know, and th there was just so many stories that just, you know, like proms that got missed yes. and things. Yes. But it was just the educational aspect also because, you know, it's just a different learning atmosphere when you're having to do it online versus in the classroom setting. And so, yeah, I think years from now, they'll look back and they'll see that there that gap hurt a little bit. Mm -hmm. And so it's up to the student, up to the adult once mm -hmm. they graduate to go back and figure out how they could fill that gap in for themselves. But it was it was just, yeah, um, there's crazy times at the school. I mean, I and our hats off to our, you know, our former superintendent was amazing, Dean Ree. She, uh, wow, she would communicate with us every day. and We would send our numbers to her every day uh, so she could make those decisions, um, you know, where we were. And it, what a what a tough time that we, you know, that we came through and that she led the district. It was remarkable. And uh, I do feel like, you know, I'm kind of like a reconstruction kind of superintendent now. I'm We're trying to get us beyond that and moving forward and, and, and it's a new new day, new thoughts, new things work. Uh, some things don't work anymore. And uh, oh, our, 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 our teachers are amazing the way they stand in the gap for those kids. And they do that every single day. 25, 30 kids. I'll tell you a uh, funny story for you guys a second. So I tried to sub. I said when I was a police officer, I was a police officer. A lot of folks don't know that. Maybe we can talk about my backgrounds. But. I was a police officer and I was an SRO. And so when I was a police officer, uh, my wife was a parapro uh, in a special ed pre-K class. And so I said, you know what, honey, I need to give back to the school system. I, I'm going to go through the substitute teacher class. So I went in, went through substitute teacher training. I was all fired up. And I got a call from a, uh, a uh, primary school teacher at Ringo Primary School. And uh, she said, can you sub this day? Well, I happened to be off that day in my patrol job. So I thought, well, I'll go sub. I tell folks, guys, I subbed one day <laughs> and I never subbed again. I had no idea what it was like in a classroom. I had no clue. You know, I have two girls and, 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 and they wore me out. I couldn't even keep up with them half sure. the time. You, you're talking about kindergarten cop. You're dropping a police officer in a classroom, 25, 20, 30, gym, even more. I had a ball that day, but I couldn't move the next day. I mean, I chased those balls for the kids. I had a <laughs> blast. But if you've never subbed and been in a school like that, it, it's not like it was when, when you and I went to school. It's a, we didn't have cell phones. Oh, no. We didn't yeah. have social media. We'd have computers. You remember the? I mean, we had one computer in the computer lab, and you got to use it ever so often. It's a different time. It is. It is. Now, as far as teachers go, I mean, are, is there a shortfall of just teachers in Catoosa County, and still trying to get that gap filled as well? And that, so, yeah, where are we employee wise? I guess. Uh, so, we eliminated seventy positions for this coming school year um 70 uh to cut the budget and we cut it by 5.6 million dollars and we eliminated some other things that we could uh, afford to make some adjustments on um some operations issues where we could cut and save some money that uh would not have 
as dramatic effect on our kids because that's what you do when you're looking at cutting that budget. Where are you going to cut? That's about where are you going to cut and uh, what programs and services. That, that's it. You, you, if you cut, you cut programs. And we don't have we, <laughs> 85, 85% 80, of our employees come from just a few areas. Teachers by far. Our, our, our teachers and assistant teachers are, I'm going to throw a rough guess out, six, five, seven, five. they're probably 75 just to, so you're talking about the teacher, 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 assistant. They're probably 75 percent of our employees, at least. And then you're going to throw in, you know, your bus driver's going to be, you know, eight percent. Your cafeteria workers, they're going to be six, seven. It's probably seven, eight percent. Your your maintenance guys. So that's the. By, by the time you get there, our county office is probably one percent of the you know folks that work in the school system I mean, we have a very lean county office i've looked at the numbers because i wanted to make sure <laughs> because i get asked that question and we have lean on it we don't have any more administrators than any other school district any i mean i know i i know i can tell you i can show it to folks so, so we're what, that, that's pretty interesting because obviously yeah I, that's going to be something that'll be eye-opening for people is mm -hmm. You cut. We did. Make cuts because folks right now are saying, well, you know, the budget's ballooning. Mm -hmm. So we must be adding things. Mm -hmm. And are we adding things that we shouldn't and, and take that burden down? No, you made cuts. Oh, we cut. We we cut so much. Uh, last year, the, the, the Board of Education, they met with me and they said, we want you to we've, uh, go line by line. And we're going to see where we can. Uh, cut funding in the budget, and then we also want you to see is are there ways that that we can increase funding? And so we did both. We we increased our funding by over well over a million dollars. I think it was over two, but I'll say one because I want to be safe. But I it was I, I'm ninety five percent sure it was over two million dollars where we increased funding. How do you increase funding from from the state? Uh, we increased our state funding. But we went to some classes to uh, to to learn how to better code um, our students. So if and, and this gets complicated, but a regular high school kid, the state gives you twenty five hundred dollars to educate that kid. That's about twenty five hundred less, less than three thousand. But if you are an elementary sk school kid and you're a gifted kid, they give more money because they say it, you, you, it takes additional money to educate those kids because they don't look at them all equal. They're on a they're, they've got a code book this long of every kid. And, and honestly, from the state, they tell you this is how much money you can we're going to give you to educate that student. And so we went to a training and said how how can we better are there things that we don't know because it always changes the sure. state change every legislative session huh. and every board meeting the state has a board and they change the rules so the legislature changed the laws and the school board of the state school board changes the rules and then when they do that they push those out to me and they say here's how you need to run your system if you want to continue to get state funding and if you don't do these things, we're not going to give you that funding. So there's a tremendous misnomer that we have all this local control, that we can just do whatever you want to do. They tell us so how many days you have to go to school. They determine seat time. They determine uh, how much, you know, they, they tell you how much you can pay your teachers. There is a state pay scale. Our teachers our state employees. I'm a state employee. We're all state employees in the sense that the state gives the money to the district to run the school system. And our state funding is 85 maybe percent of our uh, of our budget, uh, 80, 85. So, you know, the, the local funds, um, I'm going to say you got eighty million dollars that we get now. More probably this year is probably more ninety five million or so or so from the state. These are rough numbers, but sure, sure. ninety five million dollars from the state, thirty five million from the local property taxes, and then you get maybe seven or eight percent of your budget from the federal government. Uh, and that's what I said. Title one, two, three. Uh, it's but when you take those funds, they're going to say you're going to do these things, and if you don't do them. 
they'll withhold the funds. So we don't have the, the, the type of local control that most folks think we do. We can't, I can do nothing on the insurance. People ask me, will you, would you, uh, why don't you guys uh, just make the employees pay more uh, for their insurance and then it won't cost us as much? And the answer is very simple. I can't. I have no control over it. So, yeah, if you're looking at it from the outside in school boards talking about we're, we're going to take an increase because we've got an increase in insurance. And most folks would think, well, if I had a business and I, I just shop my insurance around, right? Mm -hmm. You know, I'd say, okay, I'm with X, X company over here and I feel like maybe they're charging me too. I'm going to shop that insurance around and see if I can find a better rate. That's just normal thinking. That's mm -hmm. what we do in our everyday lives. But you can't do that. Oh. Yeah. States, you get it from one source. You can only get it from one source. And so you're, yeah, wow. And, they, and they're in control of it. You, you, can't, you, you can't touch it. I can't. And it doesn't matter if, you know, if you have your whole family on the plan or if you get a silver plan, a gold plan, or whatever plan, the money is the same for the school system. They just go down through this. Hey, how many people did, got insurance? Here's how much money your bill is. And wow. it increased. Ten and a half million dollars year over year. Two years. We had a ten and a half million dollars these last two years. Uh, so that is a tremendous uh, budget impact. I, 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 so an easy rule of thumb is ninety percent of your school budget is personnel. It's like any other, whether you're the sheriff's officer, 90% of a business's budget is always the personnel. Then the other percent is, you know, the uh, infrastructure, the equipment, all those things. But 90% is personnel. So I could turn off every light. We could stop rolling, you know, the buses. We could not give people soap in the sinks at the schools. We could turn all the lights off. And you're only going to save 10%. Because 90% of that budget is personnel. And the vast, like I said, 80, over 80% are teachers that are in the classroom working with kids. Uh, so administrators work with adults. And teachers and teachers' kids work with kids. And that's how it works. Uh, you have to have so many adults. And the state funds administrators because they know you've got to fill these reports out for us. Right. We, you, you don't fill that report out. You don't pass that audit, you're in trouble. You're not, and uh, th these report, all this stuff is posted online. Oh my gosh, they are. It, it's not a tax. It's not a tax return. It is a. It's a book that you've all those reports that they we have to report to them. What third grade kid of this age of this color of this economic status was in this block at this period at that school on this day. Wow. They've got all of that. And if you don't get that right, you'll have errors on your report. And so it, 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 the school system is complicated. Uh, I get it. Uh, I didn't invent it. I don't, I didn't create sure. the economy. Uh, we just live in it. <laughs> I mean, there's a lot of things that go on behind the scenes. I was listening the other day to our sheriff, Gary Sisk, and he was presenting to the county um, for his budget coming up for the year. Mm -hmm. And he was going through things that the average citizen wouldn't think about. He's like, listen, I'll just give you one quick example. He said, you know, we get requests, open records requests for body cam footage. And he said, the surprising number of folks that ask for it are attorneys yeah. and insurance companies. Mm -hmm. He said, because the insurance companies want to see that to see if there's a way maybe they could get out of a claim, right? Sure. Makes sense. Sure. And attorneys want it to fight a case. And mm -hmm. so he said, but for every request we get, we have to go through that footage ourselves and make sure we're not letting out personal information that shouldn't be there. So I've got to have a person doing that behind the scenes and it takes this many hours and this is how many requests we've had and the average person wouldn't even think yeah. about that right because it's something that's not seen mm -hmm. but it's something he has to comply and do mm -hmm. and and it takes money it takes tax dollars and it takes that person or people in gary's situation to do those things that the average citizen just doesn't know right and and here again that's why i like the podcast because we can come on here and we could talk about that and get a little education out there um that you know i didn't know or the average person doesn't know so it's tough um i do want to get to your background yeah because that's always what matters is the people right and it start starts with you right yeah, you're our superintendent right. so Kind of give us, you know, how did you, yeah. Yeah. I, I love the, the background it's, stories are always the best. I'll tell you, it's, it, it's, it, you never know where you're going to land, 
Right. You know, you, you never know how your life's going to turn out. Uh, I heard a guy say, you know, uh, looking back, it, it's super clear. But when you look forward, you, you don't know. Um, so, you know, it's identify with a lot of our kids who were who who have lost a parent or uh, who were, you know, poor, to be honest with you. Uh, my father died when I was about three years old. Uh, I was raised by a single mom. Um, she married. I had a wonderful mom. She quit school in the eighth grade. Uh, my father, I'm not sure, to be honest, uh, you know, how if he completed school or not. I never, I don't have any memory of him. Uh, but my mother married and, and she remarried and uh, it was tough. Uh, my mom used to laugh at me, she, you know, when she would get something wrong or whatever. She would say, now, don't you, don't you laugh at me. This was before Oprah. You know, we didn't know the things that these parents know now. I did the best I could, you know, and right. gosh, she was so she was precious. She was a brilliant woman, a brilliant woman, and so, so good with people. And she would teach us um, through stories. Oh, she, we, she, everything. She, she was an, you know, Aesop's fables kind of person. She would teach us life lessons through stories and uh, was a wonderful mother. But we were poor, and I went to 11 different schools. Uh, I have them on my phone. We moved a lot. Single moms move a lot. So every year, you know, I, I remember one year it was around the fifth grade, they brought me back and I had actually gone to that school in the beginning of the year. And then my mother moved and then we moved back in that same area. So I went back to that same school and it was a few months later. So they walked, the principal walked me in and said, uh, hey, class, we have a new student. I want to. <laughs> and one of the kids in the front said, he's not a new student. He's a used student. <laughs> uh, so, you know, I, I, I walk in. So. It, it, I get that with our kids. It, it, what makes you you? What makes me me? That had a profound impact on me. Uh, and so, you know, fast forward, uh, I met my wife at a, a very conservative school, a fundamental independent Baptist uh, hellfire breathing school, you know, King James Version only school. You know, my wife, we, she didn't wear pants. You know, it was, we had no television when we got married. It was that kind of school. And uh, we'd go into that kind of church and, uh, you know, Heather's amazing. She, oh, I love her so much. We've been married 30 years and she's a, she's not just a, an amazing wife. She's a wonderful mother to our two girls. They both went through our school system, graduated from our school system. Uh, Heather works, uh, at, uh, uh, Ringgold, uh, L, uh, real primary school. She's a special ed, uh, kindergarten teacher. And then Haley, uh, is, a uh, librarian or media specialist, as we call them nowadays, at Ringo Middle. And uh, my life is so, so amazing. Uh, she started in education before I did. I was a police officer and uh, I was getting older. And I thought, man, I'm not going to be able to chase these guys forever. I'm breaking down, getting hurt. And so I thought, there's an SRO spot open. I thought, man, that'd be a great schedule for my family. Uh, Heather's on that schedule. I'd be on that schedule. It works great. So I applied and uh, got the job. And um, so that was the school resource officer at Lakeview High School. And uh, man, when I got in there, it was amazing. I fell in love with those kids. Uh, the relationships I got to build with those kids. It, I was also developing as a man while I was watching these kids. So I'm thinking, I know how that kid feels in school. And I got to build relationships with the kids based upon the experiences I had. And, and oh, it was amazing. Well, uh, they opened a new school. Heritage is opening. I had no, you know, I had no idea about the school's pieces and who, what was opening and who was going there. But they wanted to start a criminal justice class there. And so they asked uh, uh, that the, the Mr. Bradford had contacted the, sh the sheriff's offices. Do you have anybody who might be able to teach that class? And uh, the sheriff's office said, Chance Nix. He's the guy. And so they came over and they asked me if I would come and interview. And I did. Got the job. Taught there for six years. It was amazing. I loved it. Learned so much uh, and built so many great relationships. Um, and then I was asked, you know, have you ever thought about being an administrator? And I was no. I said, no, I'm not. I have no thought about that at all. They said, well, did you not get that application that came through? I said, yes, sir. And what'd you do? with it? I threw it in the garbage. Well, I'm going to give you another one. I want you to fill it out. And so, sure enough, became an elementary school assistant principal at Westside Elementary. And I was there for a year. And then the assistant principal job at Lakeview High School came open. And I thought, wow, how awesome. I would get to go back and be 
an assistant principal at the school where I was an SRO yeah. and put in for it, got the job later, became the principal. Did that for several years. And then Miss Reese announced that her, she's retiring. I thought, I'm, I'm going for it. You know, put in to be superintendent. Uh, most unlikely candidate in the world, I promise you. If you'd have taken bets, you'd have <laughs> lost a lot of money. But I, I applied and, you know, that is such an extensive the process to become a superintendent, and it should be, is unbelievably uh, extensive and, and thorough. And, and, you know, the interview, uh, that stuff is a lot. But uh, thankfully, uh, the board, they offered me the position. And uh, it's the greatest day. I, I, I just I loved it. And I just feel like that this job is a calling. I don't do this job just for the money. Hey, I have two girls and they love phones and I, I have to give them, they get, sure. they get a lot of it. Uh, but I do it because it's a calling and I truly believe in public education. I believe in public education because it educates 90% of the students graduate from a public school. So I'm a big defender of public schools. Um, private schools, th those are wonderful. They have their place and good for them. But that's not my calling. My calling is to love and support and defend and build up and promote public school, public school kids, public school teachers. They are unbelievably amazing people. Uh, they change the world. They are making a difference in our society that no one understands. So many of our kids, they, they don't get the positivity of going to church. A small percentage of, of some populations uh, of our students attend church so they don't get that positivity whatever the faith is so a lot of that real positivity comes through our school systems through our teachers that are working with that kid every day and loving them through the athletic programs that that draw that kids learn to grow and make friends and 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 compete and and learn how to behave when you get mad or when you don't win uh when you do win those are, you know, I never see anybody walk, driving around with a, a big Ford truck and it says, you know, uh, Lakeview High School, CCRPI score, our test score. No, what do they do? They put that old English R on the back of that truck because they're, they're a tiger and they, they, they love that. I played ball over there. I, you know, they show up on Friday nights and get loud. And that, that's what the, most parents are concerned. They want their kid to feel loved in school, be accepted in school. And to be successful there um, and, and athletics and clubs and those things play such a huge role in that. Uh, those are the things that do they cost money? Yes, they do. Everything costs money. But a, a school system without those things is not a school system where anybody wants to go. No. Yeah. It, it, and it yeah. just had it would have such a horrific impact. And, and I know schools are expensive. I hear it all, the time, especially this time of the year, as you mentioned earlier. But we got a great school system. And what I found is most people, they expect a fair return on their investment. And school system, the school system is an invest. It's not just a cost. There's a difference between a cost and an investment. School system, the schools are an investment in your community. And what they want is a fair return. And I'm proud to report that our school system performed higher than the state average that's a lot of that's 159 counties plus a lot of other cities and things we were higher than the state average we outperformed the state that's what I, that says you guys in Catoosa County outperformed the state and not only that we're part of a RESA that's about 17 school districts and we outperformed our RESA so what I say to folks is this I get it I know school's expensive. Hey, I, I don't like paying for, you know, I hadn't been on three notch road in a while. I don't want to pay for that. Somebody's driving down that road and we got to maintain it. I get it. Uh, I haven't called the sheriff's office in a long time. Why does he get my money? You, do you want in there when you pick up the phone? Other people, it, it is an investment in your community and folks want a fair return on that investment. And I will challenge anyone. You show me where Catoosa County public schools is not a fair investment. You show us where uh, somebody else is doing it better or cheaper than us. 
You're not going to find it. I know that's true. And it's been that way. And everybody else knows it. And that's why they come here. There are lots of schools. We've got one around us. It's, you know, six, seven hundred kids. There's one down there. It's four or five thousand kids. We, we've got We are a lot. We have 10,000 kids. You go find a like system somewhere on 10,000. You find it. See if they're doing it cheaper. See if they're doing it better. We're not perfect, but we're amazing. And I love our schools and I love our school board and I love our community. And I, just like you, I wanted my kids to go to our schools. And so does everybody else. They do. Wow. Well, I think that's a great place to <laughs> end the episode here. Um, the passion comes out in you. And I think, and then that's why, listen, one thing I'll say, it's a great testament to anybody watching. And I, I'm sure we might not have a lot younger audience, maybe than what we would like, um, but hopefully that changes as well. But what I'm saying is your testament to that your story is a great story. You know, it doesn't matter where you start. And like you said, you didn't see where you were going and all the places along the way. What an amazing story for a lot of folks out there. Um, you know, the first thing I'll say real quick is, you know, we just went through and J.D. Vance was telling his story. You know, he's the vice presidential candidate for the Republican ticket, but his story and I had never heard it uh, like a lot of folks. And so I watched the movie. My wife listened to the book. But here again, there's some similarities there. <laughs> I, or eerily yeah. similar um, yeah. in, in the way it started and where, where he's finished and where yeah. you're at. Yeah. This shows, folks, it doesn't matter where you start. And opportunities in our school system are a great place for these folks to start. But thank you for what you do for Catoosa County. Thank you. You are definitely, in my opinion, the right person in the right place at the right time for what we need in Catoosa County in our schools. Thank you. And thank you for being there for us. And thank you for everything you do for all the children here in Catoosa County. So until next time, Catoosa County, thank you. Thanks for tuning in. Have a great week. That's awesome, man. I had a great time. And, uh, you know, thank you because you're getting this, you're getting the good word out. And uh, yeah, we got to do that. As one will always be better than.